I do think it needs to be state election officials running elections. And, and as you correctly pointed out, one of the conversations we had after the 2016 election, in addition to the superdelegate reform to return power to the people, is we incentivize states to go from uh, caucuses to primaries. There were 14 states four years ago that held caucuses. Seven of them are now primary states. Uh, Iowa chose to keep their uh, caucus status. And I think what we learned from uh, all the mistakes that were made, and, un and it's undeniably unacceptable. I'm frustrated. I'm mad as hell. Everybody is. And, and I think what we're going to do at the end of this cycle yeah. is have a further conversation about whether or not uh, state parties should be running elections. We are really good at uh, building parties, building organizing, building the best voter file, winning elections, and we've done that in 2017, 18, and 19. That's our sweet spot as a party. And but not it, running elections itself. Right, and, and one of the challenges... So, but it, you say it's time for a conversation. I'm saying isn't it time for the DNC to say, that's it, no more caucuses, no more party, well, no parties doing this, no more volunteers. We need, it, it is official DNC policy to have primaries and have state election officials do this. Well, one of the one of the challenges and the reason we don't do we didn't do that in our most recent conversation about this is that you need to pass a state law to have a state run primary. And there are some states that still have uh, caucuses where I'm not sure the Republican governor would sign the law to have uh, the election. So that's a challenge. If 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 a state won't pass the law and, and in those seven states mm -hmm. that I mentioned that move from caucus to primary they had a bill that was passed in their legislature, and they move forward. But I, I think it's abundantly clear, Jake, and, and this is one of the lessons of last week, is that we should do, as a Democratic Party, the things we do well, and that is building organizing, building uh, right. coalitions, winning elections. That's what we've been doing. And I, I look forward to the conversation, not only about whether uh, we should get out of the business of running elections, but also we're going to have a conversation about uh, order as well. Well, that's the thing. Is Iowa about to lose their first in the nation caucus uh, status? Are they about? I mean, it's not difficult to imagine South Carolina, uh, New Hampshire, other states that are out of the process. Illinois, for example, the governor there is there uh, is making a big pitch saying, Iowa, you lost your chance. You screwed up. It's time for another state to take over. Is that is that possibly going to happen? Well, that's the conversation that will absolutely happen after this election cycle. Uh, and after the last election cycle, we had a conversation about two really important things, uh, superdelegate reform and uh, the primary caucus uh, issue that we're discussing now. And that's going to happen again. I have no doubt about it because it's very necessary. And uh, How much yeah. responsibility do you take for what happened? I understand the Iowa Democratic Party did what they did, um, but the DNC plays a role. Uh, do you take any responsibility? Sure. Yeah, the, the Iowa Democratic Party runs the actual election. Our partnership with our state parties, anytime something goes wrong, whether it's something that's run by the state party or not, uh, we're all in this together. So that's why we had a team of people. I'm really proud of our team. I mean, team. the DNC approved the plan. Well, the, the DNC did a number of things in connection with the plan. They wanted to do a virtual caucus, Jake, mm -hmm. uh, where people could actually vote. Uh, it's going to be uh, over the telephone. And we said no because we had cybersecurity concerns. Uh, the, the, infamous, the now infamous app, they actually used an app in 2016 uh, to conduct the tallies. They weren't voting with it, but they used an app in 2016. And they did their own RFP to uh, select a vendor. And the question we asked was, have you pressure tested it? Uh, have you pressure tested it? And uh, What clearly, did they tell you? Uh, they gave us assurances that it was going to work. It didn't work. We're going to but had they pressure that. tested it? Well, with hindsight, not no. nearly enough. So you know this, that some Democrats are calling for your resignation. Former Congressional Black Caucus Chair Congresswoman Marsha Fudge said, quote, we're a party in chaos. Congresswoman Ilhan Omar said Tom Perez should be held accountable for this failure. Have you considered resigning? Absolutely not. Jake, look at the last three years. My job when I came in was to rebuild our infrastructure, to win elections. And when you do that, sometimes you've got to make tough decisions. Our superdelegate reform. Uh, I have great respect for Congresswoman Fudge. She doesn't support it. I get that. And I respect that. But I categorically disagree with her on this. We have been winning. This is what it's about. I think it's really important for people to take a, a broader step back right now. Uh, you know, this is the most unsettling phase of the cycle. Mm -hmm. you know, in 1991, George Herbert Walker Bush's approval ratings were 
were sky high. Uh, people were saying there's nobody in the Democratic Party field who can win. And there was a lot of understandable angst. We're in a similar position now in the sense that uh, I don't know who the nominee is going to be. We're, right. we're barely out of the starting gate. And the angst is uh, elevated because we have the most dangerous president in American history. But here's the good news. Yeah. We've been winning elections in 2017, 2018, 2019. Right. We are better positioned to hand our nominee an infrastructure for success than ever before. Speaking of infrastructure, can the American people, can Democrats have faith in A, the results that ultimately come from Iowa, and B, what happens in Nevada? Because they are also going to have a caucus and they are also talking about using not the same app from Iowa, but a different, what they're calling a tool, according to uh, the Nevada Independent newspaper. Let me uh, handle Nevada, and, uh, and then I'll handle uh, mm -hmm. uh, your Iowa question. Yeah, I have great confidence in uh, Nevada. We've, we've been in touch with them regularly. Uh, they have a great party infrastructure. They have great leadership, and they have a great team, and we will continue to assist them uh, in whatever manner possible to make sure that caucus is a success. They have early voting in Nevada. Unlike Iowa, that's going to be helpful. You know, as it relates to Iowa, I asked for a re-canvas because I want to send a message to voters that we want to make sure that every vote counts. And it's clear that it's a very close race between uh, Mayor Budatich and Senator Sanders. Can people have and, faith in the results, the ultimate yeah. results out of Iowa? Are you going to trust them? Uh, I do, and, and here's why. Uh, this is about who gets the most national delegates to the convention. And the 90, 95 precincts that they're looking at right now uh, the range of delegate allocation, again, 41 delegates, um, is unlikely to be um, affected by these problems that were uncovered. Having said that, you know, mm -hmm. we should not have problems. Yeah. This was unacceptable. And that's why uh, we did what we did, and that's why we're learning from it. And you know, the, the good news here is that we are gonna, we're learning from our mistakes, applying them immediately, and... Uh, we're going to keep moving forward, and we're going to be talking about health care everywhere across America. All right. Thank you so much. That's how we win. DNC Chairman Tom Perez, appreciate your time, sir.